On today's episode, we are going to be doing some DIY outdoor decor. I'm really excited about the projects that I've got for you. And yes, I am fresh back from my trip with my husband to the Dominican Republic. We had a fantastic time. So thank you to those of you who asked about it. I'll put a few photos up on the screen to kind of give you a little highlight of what we had going on. <laughs> But less than 24 hours after we returned from home, feeling all tan and refreshed from our vacation, a huge storm rolled in. My husband and I were sitting in our home on the couch, having a conversation, and all of a sudden, both my husband and I stopped mid-sentence because it, what sound like, like, I don't know, like a freight train or jet engine right outside our house was going on. Just looked out the window and as I did, I saw my outdoor umbrella. I love this umbrella, <laughs> but it was lifted out of its cement base that is holding it. So it lifted the umbrella out of the cement pot, threw it up here, poked a bunch of holes. I don't know if you can see them up here in our screen. Ripped out this panel here, that panel here, and then our umbrella landed over here. It's kind of a mess out here. And it pierced right through there. It was just so crazy. This might be the weirdest thing that happened. The little marshmallow roaster landed in this little tiny eye hook. Super weird, huh? So we had a little cleanup to do. Even though I know how to repair my own pool screen and I did an episode on it, there was just so much damage. I decided to go ahead and hire a repair company because I was not getting up on the top of my lanai to fix all of those panels, but it was something like 18 to 20 panels. Basically, we have like a whole new lanai. Okay, the screens are all repaired. It looks amazing, but we're still missing the cool cabana umbrella. I got it on order, but we're gonna have to wait for that, but it's looking fantastic once again. With that excitement out of the way, it is time to get into our outdoor DIYs. I am so excited, like I said, so let's get started with our first one, which is actually part two of a table bistro makeover. So just a few episodes ago, we made this really amazing chess table. It's outdoors. It lifts up so you can hide all of the chess pieces underneath this. And I thought it would be really cool to do like a part two of this DIY. So if you wanna see how we made this part, go check out the episode before. You can do either or or both. <laughs> and so before we could fully get started on this DIY, I had left the tabletop for this outdoors and the wind during that storm knocked it over and kind of damaged and broke off a section. So I needed to fix that and I wanted to leave it in the DIY to kind of show you what was going on, why it looked the way it did, or if you have something like this happen, maybe you can kind of know how to repair it. So what I did to repair this was, I first decided I was just gonna try to glue it and see what happened if that would work out good. So I took some wood glue and then I took a clamp that's like a strap clamp that's really great for round objects, large objects, or kind of weird shaped objects. And I attached that. And then I realized it wasn't gonna be like a tight enough seam. So I undid all of that, it kind of removed it and didn't let it dry and decided to add some pocket holes. And I took the Craig jig and kind of put in five of them, three in one direction, two in the other, to really help cinch that together and create a, hopefully a much more sturdy table round when it was complete. And so once we got those pocket holes in, I redid all the glue, reattached that strap clamp and made sure it was nice and tight. And then of course I added in the screws using our special pocket hole drill bit and just screwed those into place using a pocket hole Craig jig is actually quite easy. It's less intimidating than I thought and it really does create a nice tight joint. 
And then I let that fully dry. So with our tabletop repair, then it was time to actually move on to the DIY. So then I removed our original chest tabletop that we made in that last episode and kind of centered it on top of the round. And it really kind of came to the edges of this tabletop round. And I traced it all around just so I knew that it was perfectly centered and nothing was gonna be off kilter and then I decided well how are we gonna make this sit because I'm not just gonna put the tabletop round on it that would feel to me like it could easily be bumped off and and not just be a quality piece so my idea was to kind of wrap it in wood so that it was very sturdily sturdily is that a word <laughs> it was on there good either way I took some little strips of wood that I had cut off and they I think they were about three quarter inch by one and a half inch they were left over from another project and I kind of traced where I wanted them to be all the way around and then I took them to my miter saw I love my new miter saw it's awesome uh, cut so smooth it's nice <laughs> and then I proceeded to make those cuts now they were a little bit more than a 45 degree angle you could probably get away with a 45 degree angle having done it now but it was a little bit more than a 45 degree angle so I just kind of pulled it out a little bit lined it up with a line and made the cuts <laughs> probably not the best way to do it but it worked for me and then once I had made all four pieces so all four sides of that underneath table then I took some wood glue and some finish nails and nailed that to the underside of the table leaving the chest table in place so that it I knew that it would fit on there nice and snug you want to be able to move it out but you want it to be kind of nice and snug on that so it's not going anywhere and not being bumped around easily if you weren't doing this portion I would just refer you back to the original video where we made the chest table and all we did is took like a big wood round that I got at the craft store the home improvement store and I wood glued and attach that to the underside and you could forego that like wrap section it's really easy so it's kind of the same concept as before just sands the chest table so go back and watch that episode and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about so with our tabletop now sturdy and ready to go I proceeded to stain the entire thing in a briar smoke gel stain which is kind of like a, a warm gray tone and I really love gel stain because it's got such good coverage I tend to like um, like a little bit more opaque stain and a little less translucent not all the time but generally speaking I do tend to go with a gel stain because I, I just like it <laughs> I don't know and then I let the gel stain fully dry but before we could leave it out we needed to seal it now you could go with a, like a polyacrylic but I really feel like the better way to go here was to use this Thompson's water sealer I do have to forewarn you it does take a little while to dry and maybe that's just because I live in Florida and it's super humid and the humidity makes it dry slower and they do say one coat is sufficient um, so I don't know about that I did go back in and touch up a few spots but I didn't want to overdo it but you put on a waterproofing seal and then let that dry and if you live in a drier climate maybe it will dry faster for you do not skip that step in my opinion because if you don't seal it very well this type of like butcher block type of table is not going to hold up and stand the test of the weather elements if you don't do that step it could break apart over time so with a tabletop done I'm gonna ask you to hang on just a second with me before we do the reveal because there are some other working elements and we're gonna kind of cover them all before we do that reveal so stick with me we're gonna do a couple more DIYs and it will all make sense in the end so hang on <laughs> I promise I'm getting you the reveal Our next DIY, we are going to upgrade some bistro chairs. Now, I went back and forth and hemmed and hawed for weeks over what kind of chairs to do until I went into Hobby Lobby recently and saw these really 
cute chairs with a cool shape. Now, the colors were a little wild for like what I've got going on on my patio. One was a bright yellow and one was a red. That wasn't gonna work for me, but the shape and the size and all of that really worked and I liked it. The price was pretty good as well at $48.99. So I picked up two and brought them home. And the first thing we did is give them a good spray painting on the bottom, on the top, in a flat black spray paint. And you're gonna have to flip it over, put it in a lot of different angles and make sure that the, the whole thing is covered. I ended up using three cans of spray paint for the two chairs, so about a can and a half per chair to get it really well covered. And then with it fully dry, I put on the little caps back on the feet of the chair and it was looking good. Now, you could leave it like that, but it was a wire seat and it didn't feel like it would be like uber comfortable. And I wasn't sure about doing a cushion on that because I felt like it would like push down through the graded thing. And I thought it would be really cool to give it a wood seat that matched our wood top that we just created. And it just so happened that the wood rounds that they sell at Hobby Lobby, that I don't know the exact size. I think it's 16 to 18 inches. I sat them down in the store while I was buying them and realized that that was a good fit. So I just took those wood rounds and stained them in that same Briar Smoke gel stain on the front and the back and let that fully dry. And then of course, we cannot skip the ceiling of these chairs as well. Um, so what I did is I sealed one side, let that dry, and then I flipped it over and sealed the other side and so that it was fully protected top and bottom. And then I was like, how are we gonna attach this? We've got like a metal kind of interesting seat and this wood, how are we gonna attach them? And then I'm like, what about zip ties? I'm like, that could work. And so what I did, because the arms were kind of an interesting shape, it wasn't really fitting on my table well. So what I did is sat that wood right on top of where it needed to be. And then I laid on the ground and then I kind of traced out where I wanted to attach that on the underside. And once I got that all traced out, I took it to my little work table and I stapled on about six zip ties that were already black and used a couple of them on each one. And then I put it back where it was supposed to go, kind of threaded through the zip ties so it would wrap around all of those little spots that I got. And then I put the zip tie through the little device and pull it really tight. And then it, it's a nice snug fit and it worked out really great. Then you cut off the excess and you would never know that these seats are attached with zip ties. It's gonna be great. It's gonna work out just fine for our purposes. And if we ever wanted to remove the wood for whatever reason down the road, that would be easy as well. So we're done with the chairs and you're probably like, show it to me, show it to me. But I'm gonna ask you to hang with me just a second longer because I have one more project that's gonna go in that little vignette and I wanna reveal it all at one time. So no reveal yet, just yet. But hang on, <laughs> I promise it's coming and I hope you like it because I really do. This next DIY is a really quick one, I promise. All I did is I found this urn and it kind of mimicked the base of our table and it kind of had some similar coloring. And I'm like, I really wanna tie this all together. It was pretty as is. I'm gonna just say that up front. So when I do what I do, you'll understand why I'm doing it. I could have left it alone, but I wanted to add in that black and really tie that whole look together. So what I did is I kind of taped it off um, protecting those little decorative arms and like around the base. And then I mixed some black chalk paint with some baking soda because I really wanted it to have kind of like a, a little bit more rough texture. And I mixed that all together. And then I proceeded to like stipple it onto the pot so it would kind of increase that texture and not have any brush strokes, but have like a, a stippled effect, which I really liked in this case. Then I took a small paintbrush and gotten all the little nooks and crannies and finished that out. And then of course, 
course, I did not want to forget the inside because I didn't know how much of that would be exposed when we planted up our pot. And so I painted that out as well and let that fully dry. And that's it. It was a really quick makeover. Then I just threw some stones into the bottom of it to help with some of that drainage. I got this really pretty kind of orangey colored plant. I'm not even sure exactly what it's called at um, Walmart for very inexpensive. I just thought it was like a nice little pop of color. It's kind of matches the shirt that I'm wearing actually. And that was it for that project. And now it's time for the reveal that I promised you. So the first thing I did is I got this area rug at Hobby Lobby. It was round. It was a really good size. It kind of had some natural elements, but with the black and the white that I already have going on with my color scheme. And I rolled that out where we were going to be putting the table. Then I took our pot base. And I don't think I mentioned this in the first one because it was in that original episode, but it was literally just a big plant that I believe I picked up from Lowe's and it makes a beautiful base for a table in my opinion a little bistro set of course our little chess pieces are already inside and then I placed our chess table on top and then I placed our round table on top of the chess table kind of making sure it was nice and snug and fit and then all of a sudden it looks like a really cute bistro set with that on and then I added the chairs and then of course I added some little banana stripe pillows that kind of matches like the overall look of the patio. Now, if you haven't seen like my whole patio makeover, I'll link that below in the description box because it, I really love my patio. It's really fun. I know I use it sometimes to like build stuff, but I do try to keep it clean <laughs> because I really love my patio. And then of course I placed our beautiful flowers and that's it. And what do you think of this makeover? I absolutely love it and i think all in all i'm in this under 200 dollars for sure under 200 dollars with everything and that's including the chest table part and for how cute this is i really feel like that's a really good price i priced out a lot of these little bistro sets that and the, I think, I feel like most of them are over $300. So I feel like this is a really unique, fun look and a good deal as well. <laughs> and it's functional. And if we wanted to put something more than just chess pieces in the side of this little base urn, it would work out great. It's great additional storage for your patio. I'm always looking for good storage ideas. And I just love how this turned out. But don't leave me just yet because I have another DIY for you and it's equally as awesome in my opinion. So for our next DIY, we are gonna be doing like a solar powered fountain planter thing. Last year I did a very easy, very simple solar powered fountain and I really liked it. But I found a new solar fountain that I really, really wanted to try out and I wanted to kind of up the ante on this one, but it is also super, super easy. Anyone can do this one. So the first thing I did is I got a similar black urn pedestal base to the other pedestal bases that I have on my front porch because this was also gonna go in front of my home. I put it in the corner of our like front pathway to our house and then I took kind of another black planter and flipped it upside down and kind of tried to level it out and the reason I did that is so we didn't have to fill up the entire thing with soil and make it really heavy but also to create kind of a flat base for the next part and then what I did is I added some herbs in this pot some like oregano and thyme and I thought that would be kind of a cute little herb garden and we're gonna hope and pray I don't kill these because I'm known for killing plants for whatever reason I tried but one of you pointed out that yes my front planters in front of my house the flowers are still alive and flourishing and that was like a year ago so there is hope <laughs> All right, so with those planted up, I kind of tried a couple of different combinations with some other black pots and I thought I might go that route, but it wasn't really working for me. So I went to some stores to kind of see what other options there were. And then I found this really cool, big, heavy duty plastic bowl from Ross. And it was thick and really good size and it had this really cool like modeling effect on it. And I thought, 
actually that could work really really well <laughs> and, and so I bought it and then I set that right on the on upside down portion of that one pot that we kind of tucked down in the soil and then I put some river stones that I picked up at the Dollar Tree into the base of that to weight it down but also add a really interesting element and then I added our solar fountain feature now I found this one it had really good reviews off of Amazon but what I really loved about this one is that it lights up at night so hang on with me for just a second because it's really cool what you want to do is you peel off the little top portion and you submerge it into the water as quickly as possible so it sucks the that water right in and it will start working. It works fantastic in the daytime really, really well. There's a lot of little different toppers that you can put on it. It also does have the straws that kind of keep it in center if you want. I didn't think it needed it. it. You know, it pretty much took up the entire area there. There's lots of little different toppers. So if you wanted it to just bubble up a little bit or if you want it to spray, you can pick out what top works best for you. And I loved it. And here's the other thing is when it's spraying all this water out the sides, I'm like, hey, it's watering the plants for me. It's letting me off the hook a little bit. Maybe it will stay alive. <laughs> and so I'm like, that's a benefit to me, but you can put whatever top you wanted on that and then it just works on its own and then during the day it kind of stores energy stores energy so at night it has this really cool effect where it lights up it changes color and it's just kind of like something fun in front of my house and I love how this turned out I loved the original one but this one is definitely an upgrade from that one so it's awesome and I hope you loved it too Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope it helped you to unleash that inner DIY goddess or God and that you feel empowered and feel like you can do really cool DIYs. And if you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right here. It's super easy to do. And I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family and to all of my DIY Niners. I just want to remind you once again that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.